Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's have a look at something I call smart adjustment layers in Adobe Premiere Pro. Before we get started, I want to say I hope you're doing fine in this crazy time, staying home, staying safe, doing whatever you are doing to try to stay connected and, uh, and reach out and be well um, in this crazy time. So adjustment layers, I'll show you what they are, but I'll show you how we can add a level of smartness to them so that you can drag and drop them. The adjustment layers live in a project. So they, although things like presets are in the presets, uh, these can't live in somewhere where you can move them between applications. So they do have that limitation, but you can easily open multiple uh, projects and just copy and paste them in. So let's have a look at this piece that I'm working on and I'll show you um, why I want to start working with uh, adjustment layers on this. So I've got this moody piece and I want to start experimenting with different looks, different LUTs, maybe some grain. We all feel lonely from time to time. Feeling the loneliness are personal, so everyone's experience of loneliness will be different. So an adjustment layer can be made in a couple of different ways. The first way is to come down to the bottom of the project bin and click on the new item and choose new adjustment layer. You can also go to the file menu new and add an adjustment layer there. The reason I don't do this is because sometimes if a different panel is selected, then adjustment layer is not available. This is connected with that project bin it will always be available. I never go to the file menu new for, for anything like that. I always go down to the new item. So let's create one, new adjustment layer. It makes it the size and frame rate of the sequence. And this sequence happens to be a 24 frame per second HD sequence. You click OK. It shows up in the left-hand side and you can name this whatever you want. And you basically drag this onto a layer and drag it out. And it really is blank. There's nothing special about this. In fact, if you right click on an adjustment layer, you'll see that it's an adjustment layer. And if you turn that off, it's not an adjustment layer. So you can actually make anything an adjustment layer. This just happens to be an adjustment layer. So let's say I did want to put uh, some kind of look on here from a, a Lumetri look and that's fine. Select this and in the effects, you look for Lumetri and let's go to our film stocks. And because that's selected, all I have to do is double click on it and it's applied. So this is typical of any kind of adjustment layer. Let me just get my, uh, let me get my panel back in order here. Okay, so this is an adjustment layer. We can turn that on, we can turn that off. What's important here is in the effects controls, there's a left side, the master clip effects, that's the clip effects. And that's where this Lumetri effect showed up. What I wanna show you is that this adjustment layer, and this is what a lot of people don't understand, is they think this adjustment layer has this setting attached to it. So they'll drag this adjustment layer somewhere else, it's blank. That's because that setting as a clip effect is not part of that adjustment layer. You have to turn it into a master clip effect. Let me delete this right from the timeline and double click on it here. And when you double click on it here and go to the effects, there is no clip effect. So the, the right hand side, the clip effects only exist if the clip or the adjustment layer is in the timeline. They can't exist uh, in any other way. So you, the only thing you see is the master clip. So I'll go to my effects. Instead, I'll drag this up to here. 
Now, when I drag this adjustment layer, turn the eyeball on and off, it's applied to the adjustment layer. You'll also the, see the effects badge down at the bottom has a small red underline that tells you that a master clip effect is, a, is applied. And I have a whole tutorial on master clip effects. You can use this for creative uh, uh, jobs like looks, but you could also use it for applying uh, like a camera LUT, and you can do that to a thousand clips at one time. I use master clip effects on my own show because I shoot with log on my Canon C100, and then I chop that into all the different pieces where I, my talking head is. I don't wanna have to, to apply a, an effects change to every single one, so I do it to the master clip effects, and it affects the whole timeline. Now let's look at a couple that I've saved here. Let me get rid of this. And I've saved some here in my adjustment layers and you'll see I've named them uh, specific names. So this one is a LUT. And if we go to the effects controls, uh, this is in the creative section. So it's not in the basic session. This is where the camera LUTs would be. So I've applied a LUT here. Oh, and actually it's a different name than the one I originally applied. So I should probably change that. But this is on the master clip effects. So when I drag this over, I've got this other completely different look going on. And the other great thing is maybe I don't wanna to commit to this look cause it's pretty radical. Maybe I want to have three or four different things that I can individually turn on and off. Okay, so I've got another one here. I'm going to turn the eyeball off for that adjustment layer. I'll drag another one on here. I'm, and I'm never going to have more than one eyeball turned on for one of these adjustments. So let's look at this one. So this is a much darker look. And I'll try another one here. And we'll turn that one on and off. Again, this is another very radical, faded kind of film look. All right, well, what else? Well, how about film grain? I could drop film grain on here too. Here's film grain, and I'll drag that out. And the first thing you'll notice is the big old red line. That's because the film grain effect, so I'll double click and we'll show this in the master clip effects. This is noise, Noise HLS Auto, and I have a whole tutorial on, on working with this particular built-in effect to give you uh, grain. And you probably can't hear from, but I can hear. My CPU is now being uh, overworked here because this is a very, very uh, powerful effect and it has no GPU acceleration. So the red line is telling me, I don't have to render, but it's telling me I probably won't be able to play smoothly. My output is gonna look perfect but I just wanted to give you that uh, other option. Let's turn off this faded one and go back to the darker one. Let's go down to the end here. It's a shot kind of down a walkway. For example, some people may have misconceptions about what certain mental health problems mean. So, you might so the other thing I can do with this film grain is I can turn it off and edit. So I'll work on my on my show. In fact, I would probably protect these. So I would lock them so that when I'm cutting my video, I'm not accidentally cutting this up into a whole bunch of pieces. Um, I'll just leave it on and, and leave them on the tracks, but I'll turn the, uh, the film grain off. That way it's not working hard until I export. Now, the last one I wanna show you, which is probably the coolest one, is how about a cinematic crop? And yes, I got a whole tutorial on how to make a cinematic crop. So here's a two, three, nine to one, and I'll drag this on an adjustment layer. Now I've got a crop on this at the same time. So I'll turn this off and on to show you. There it's off, there it's on. So this adjustment layer is cropping. This one is film grain, and this one is that other look. And I'll, if I can try that other look there, I kind of like that one. That one is a little bit faded um, and uh, a little bit sadder for this particular piece. So I'll export this out and I'll show you at the end. I'll, I'll play the whole thing uh, at the end. But adjustment layers, I would still use them as a clip effect, but then I would also use them as a master clip effect or as I'm calling them a smart adjustment layer for a thing like a crop is absolutely perfect that you can use them that way. And you can 
peek inside. So if I wanted to go to the media browser and pick this particular um, project, I could open this project in the media browser and copy and paste. I don't have to have two projects open. So there's a lot of power here. And this was really um, brought to my attention by someone who was expecting, like I said, the effects to be part of that adjustment layer when they dragged it somewhere else and they were confused why it wasn't. So now you know you can have that. You have to manually do one little step. And you could do this with, by the way, with uh, presets. So I could apply a preset. So if you have a bunch of existing ones, make an adjustment layer, drag the preset to the master clip effect. And then now you have a master clip effect based on that. And actually the last thing I wanna show you, let's, let's just show you this. Um, imagine, I'm gonna cut this and paste this in. So imagine I did apply this, this layer you can see doesn't have a red line. This is a clip effect. And I do this accidentally all the time. I've applied something as a clip effect that I wanted as a master clip effect. You don't have to delete everything. You can cut the, the effect. And, and sometimes I'm confused that, that people don't know cut, copy, paste. Cut is like copy, but it deletes it from where it is. So I don't wanna leave it as a clip effect. I wanna remove it, put it in memory, and then paste it somewhere else. So cut and paste is what it's called. So I'll select the crop effect in the clip effects, and it's in the edit menu, there's cut, and it's control X or command X on Mac. So now it's in memory. I'll go to my master clip effects and paste that in. So a quick way to, to move it from, oops, I made it as a clip effect and put it in a master clip effect. So what do you think? Can you use this? Hopefully. Interesting uh, way of working. Um, and uh, for some people, it's going to be pretty revolutionary, um, especially with things like crops, being able to drop them in that easily. Uh, oh yeah, and I keep saying the last thing, the last thing is we have opacity settings. So any of these looks, I could go to the uh, opacity settings and turn that down or can't, yeah. I could do that here in the clip effects and it's going to turn that effect Oop, that was the film grain. Let's go to the LUT. So I can turn that LUT up and down and adjust that any way I want. Hey, if you're new to video reveal and you found something like this informative, take a moment and subscribe. We really do appreciate it. Hey, if you want to support us some more, you can do that through our online store, videoreveal.com slash shop. There's a place where you can donate a one-time or a monthly donation, whatever you feel you, uh, you want to give us. There's also uh, a store. There's also other things at the store to purchase, like the 20 split screens and a bunch of free stuff. So have a look at what we're doing over on videoreveal.com. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to keep you informed of all these different ways of working with the tools you already have. We all feel lonely from time to time. Feeling the loneliness are personal, so everyone's experience of loneliness will be different. One common description of loneliness is a feeling we get when our need for rewarding social contact and relationship is not met. But loneliness is not always the same as being alone. You may choose to be alone and live happily without much contact with other people, while others may find this a lonely experience. Or you may find that lots of social contact while being in a relationship or part of a family and still feel lonely, especially if you don't feel understood or cared for by the people around you. Feeling lonely itself isn't a mental health problem, but the two are strongly linked. 
Having mental health problems can increase your chance of feeling lonely. For example, some people may have misconceptions about what certain mental health problems mean. So you may find it difficult to speak to them about your problem. Or you may experience social phobia, also known as social anxiety, and find it difficult to engage in everyday activities involving other people, which could lead to a lack of meaningful social contact and cause feelings of loneliness. 